In this video, I'm going to show you how I built an ancient Egyptian type wooden lock out of a single 2x4. The first step was to find an old 2x4 and get it square on all four sides. I used the core three tools of the wood shop to achieve this, the jointer, planer, and table saw. I used the miter gauge to square up the end of the 2x4, and then after measuring the piece, I went back and cut it to a final length of 6 inches. After the 2x4 was cut to length, I used the bandsaw to cut off what will be the front and back panels of the lock. I chose to make these a quarter inch thick and used the fence for a nice straight cut. So now we have the 2x4 cut into three pieces. We'll use the center section to make up the internal components of the lock. We need to cut the center piece into seven sections in order to have three pins for the lock. Because the 2x4 is three and a half inches across, each cut will be a half inch wide, and I set the blade on the left side of the half inch mark so that the curve of the blade is taken from the piece being cut, and we don't end up with a skinny piece at the end. Once the pieces were cut, I labeled them one to seven, and removed numbers two, four, and six. These will become the moving pins of the lock, and one, three, five, and seven will become the structure or the chamber walls for the pins. I started by marking out the slot that the deadbolt will ride in. I wanted the slot one and a half inches from the bottom and one inch wide. So I made marks at one and a half and two and a half inches and finished the line with a square. I then marked out the slot where the key will go. This is similar to the deadbolt slot, but will only be cut on pieces three, five, and seven. I made marks at three and a half and four and a half inches, and again, finished the lines using a square. The first step for marking out the pins, or pieces two, four, and six, was to mark out a line three eighths of an inch from the bottom. This is where the pins will fall into the slots of the deadbolt. I then made a mark at one and two inches above the original mark, to mark out the slot. You can see here that I'm using number 7 as a story stick to mark out the width of the key slot. Using the number 7 as a story stick is not necessary, but sometimes in woodworking it's more important to have pieces identical than to have them to be a particular precise measurement. After marking out the pieces and taping them together for accuracy, I set the height of my blade to 5 eighths of an inch and removed the material on the table saw sled. If you have a dado blade, you can do this much faster than shown here. Here is the test fit and me marking out the final length of the pins. I cut the pins to length using the miter gauge of the table saw. I used the scraps of the 2x4 to cut out a 5 8 inch by 1 inch deadbolt and placed it in the lock to mark out the slots for the pins to fall into. The slots are just under a half an inch wide and are 3 8 of an inch deep. The key was cut and marked in the same way as the deadbolt. It's important that you have the key touching the end or the left side of the lock so that the key lines up correctly. I glued a stop block onto the deadbolt to prevent it from pushing in too far. Finally, for the front cover, I cut a quarter inch thick end pieces and glued them so that the top and bottom of the lock is protected. I like the clear cover better to show the workings of the lock but I built the wooden cover because I'd like to see the lock used on a shed or a gate someday. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.